Good morning, Altar Church. Can we rise to our feet this morning?
Give a clap of praise to our Father. He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of our adoration. Come on, begin to lift your voice and lift up your praise for He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Surrounding me, let it break at your name still. Call the sea to still, the rage of me to still. Every wave at your name, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, oh Jesus. Jesus, you silence me, oh Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, oh Jesus, Jesus, Please call these bones to live, call these lungs to see once again. Praise, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. Do you make the darkness tremble? Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Darkness tremble, oh Jesus, Jesus. 
worship Jesus. We worship Jesus this morning. Come on, we are blessed that we're able to worship Jesus, the most powerful name on earth, the most powerful name that has authority. Come on, you have this time right now to speak the name of Jesus over the darkness. Come on, speak the name of Jesus over every darkness. Come on, we've all walked in some sort of darkness in our lives. Come on, aren't you thankful that because of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that we are alive and well this morning? morning come on you if you gotta praise if you gotta shout if you gotta dance come on you gotta lift it up lift up the name of Jesus this morning the most powerful name the most powerful name there's authority in the mighty name of Jesus so we lift the name of Jesus this morning Jesus we worship
to know that he is a faithful father. <laughs> He's a faithful father. He calls you his son and his daughter. And when he is a father to his son and his daughter, he never leaves them. He takes you places that he knows that he can bring you and bring you out of. He's never going to take you to a place that he's going to leave you. <laughs> he's a faithful father. And he works everything for the good. The devil can come and he can steal, kill, and destroy. But guess what? Guess who my father is? Guess who my friend is? It's Jesus. And he's a man of his word. So whoever that is in this house today, 
Know that he is a good father. Know that he is faithful. In the midst of the storm, he is your refuge. He's a light in your path and he's a lamp to your feet. So I just thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Can we just sing Yeshua? Can we praise his name? Because he is Yeshua. In the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our pain, do not let your worry be louder than your worship. You know, there's a study and it said um, that gratitude and anxiety cannot be in the brain at the same time. It cannot be in the brain at the same time. It just physically is not possible. It, it can, it's, not, it's not possible. Which one are you gonna choose? That's a word from the Lord. Which one are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose gratitude? Or are you gonna choose anxiety? For me, I'm gonna choose gratitude. I don't want anxiety because anxiety is not from Him. So this morning, whatever you're feeling, praise Him. Do not let your worry be louder than your worship. We don't praise Him based off our feelings because if we praise Him based off our feelings, I would never praise Him. So let's, can we just sing Yeshua again?
Sing that one more time. Your name. disappointment. I don't know what disappointment has done to you over the past years. I don't know if you failed to meet certain expectations, but whatever that has held you down, right now I declare that you will rise in the mighty name of Jesus, that by his name, by his stripes, you are healed. You are healed and we declare that victory over your life. We declare victory over disappointment. We declare victory over not making what we thought we were supposed to be. 
But God, we thank you that there's victory in your name. This victory in your name. This victory I'm gonna in your see name. Your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle. victory you've given us, God. We thank you that you fought our battles for us, that we only need to be still and know that he is God. Lord, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory in the blood of Jesus. When he died on that cross for our sins, he gave us victory. He died for us. So Jesus, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for dying on the cross for us, God. 
Lord, if there's any areas of our lives, Lord, that we haven't, God, I ask that you would forgive us, Lord. Make us clean. Search me, oh God, and if there's anything in me that is not like you, that does not sound like you, that does not taste like you, Father God, I pray that you would refine it, that you would refine us, Lord. Refine us, Jesus. God, we praise you and we thank you that we can depend on you, Lord. of offering, a clap of praise. Jesus, we thank you, we love you, we adore you. We thank you for the word you've given us and you're about to give, God. Prepare our hearts as we take communion today, Lord. Remember your blood and your body. We lay the rest of the service into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Your hands together and give the Lord a shout of praise in his house. Oh, I came to give God all the worship and all the praise. I don't know about you, but I will give him all the praise and all the worship. David says, one thing I desire of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What is that one thing you desire? What's that one thing? One thing. One thing you desire this morning, that one thing that you will seek this morning, uh, glory to God. Uh, do you hunger and thirst uh, for God's presence? Uh, uh, glory to God. What is your desire this morning? Are you, do you want to see your God uh, uh, face to face? Uh, uh, glory to God. What is that one thing? What is that desire? What is that you're seeking after? Uh, the Bible says, ask uh, and it shall be given unto you. Seek uh, and ye shall find. Knock uh, and the door shall be opened unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness. Uh, and all these things you're chasing after will be added uh, unto you the lions may grow weak and hungry but those who seek the lord lack no good thing what are you seeking after 
this morning. Glory to God. Why are you even here this Sunday morning? Uh, glory to God. There's a lot of things we could have been doing, but you sacrificed. You got up to come here. Oh, young people setting up everything. Uh, glory to God. From last night till this morning, for what? What is our desire? What is our desire? What are we seeking after? Let church not just be a hype. Let it not be about all of this. But let us come to a point where, hey, God, I'm just here because of what you have done. Not because of what your hands have given me, but I'm here to seek your face. Uh, glory to God. I should have been in the pit, in, in, in the horrible pit, but you drew me out of there and you kept me and you placed me in a spacious place. I was in a, such a mess, but you on the day you died on the cross, you added me, you adopted me when no one wanted me. Uh, glory to God. When no one thought I was good enough. When no one thought I was beautiful enough. Glory to God. You adapted me. You called me son and daughter of the mighty God. Lord, glory to God. What are you seeking after this morning? What is your desire this morning? Are you worshiping him because what he has done? Uh, blessings upon your life. That promotion. That degree. That accolades. The degree after degree. Is that why you're worshiping God? What if you don't have any of those? What if you never saw miracles? What if you never uh, have a prayer that was answered? Uh, glory to God. Uh, would you still seek, chase the presence of God? Glory to God. Let's examine ourselves this morning. Are you truly, do you have the desire to worship God in all his beauty, in all his splendor? Uh, glory to God. Good morning, Jer uh, Altar Church. How you guys doing? Everyone's good? Come on, you're at the Altar Church where sacrifices are made and new life is born. The altar where repentance take place. The altar where recommitment takes place. An altar where transformation takes place. The altar where the fire never goes out. The altar where you feel the tangible presence of God. The altar where you have a true encounter with God. And I want to welcome each and every one of you uh, to the altar and those who are first time visitors and those who are watching us online I pray that God will uh, bless you and God will speak to you through the word and you can experience the tangible uh, presence of God from wherever uh, you're watching uh, us from and those of you are first time guests please visit our guest services and uh, we have a gift for you because you're truly a gift from God and we thank you for being here this morning let me get quickly to the word um since we have the Holy Communion in front of us, I just want to put something the Lord has laid in my heart uh, this morning. Glory to God. Psalm chapter 51. Here's a Psalm of David. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Next verse. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Next verse. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with the hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You are, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing for your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burned offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, O God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you would delight in the sacrifices of the righteous and in burned offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The psalm is about David. Here we don't see David as a warrior. A man who killed a lion and a bear in his arms, in his, with his hands. A man who cut the head of Goliath. We don't see a strong warrior, a soldier, a fighter, a, a glory to God. Here we don't see a, an anointed harp player where that when he played the harp, uh, the spirit, uh, evil spirit were cast out. Here we don't see a, a poet, a songwriter who wrote more than 73 of Psalms in the book of Psalms. Here we don't see a valiant uh, a, a, a fighter or a, a good looking, handsome, uh, a ruddy man just like Saul's uh, uh, um, servant uh, told Saul when he was looking for a harp player. Saul's servant said, is there a harp player? And Saul's servant said, yes, I know of a man. He's ruddy. He's handsome, he's strong, uh, but also the presence of the Lord is with him. People can sense the presence of God upon your life. Not only the people, the devil can sense the presence of God. Uh, glory to God. The demonic can sense who you are. And what you are made of in Christ Jesus. The Saul's servant not only looked at David and saw that he was a mighty man. Not only he was rugged. Not only he was handsome. But he added, he told Saul, hey, the presence of the Lord uh, uh, is upon him. Glory to God. Here, we don't see that kind of David. Here, we don't see who the God calls a man after my own heart. Here, we don't, see, we don't see him as one of an anointed worship leader. But here, we see David as a repenting sinner. A lamenting sinner. Cleanse me. Wash me. Blot out my transgressions. Uh, glory to God. He, he's, uh, we see him not as a big warrior. Not as a king who deserves honor. But here, God brings out David in Psalm 51 as a repenting sinner who feels dirty, who feels like he was such in a rut, a, such a mess he can't get out of. What is God trying to remind us? Those who think they will stand, be lest be careful that you don't fall. Uh, glory to God. A great man like David. Uh, uh, glory to God. A mighty warrior. A mighty king. Uh, the prince of the tribe of Judah. Uh, glory to God. And with great dignity and honor. Here's David uh, that we read about in the Psalms. Uh, that we memorize scripture over and over again. The, but the Psalms he wrote uh, brings comfort to us. It refreshes us. But let me remind you this morning. Here in Psalm 51, we do not see uh, a mighty David. Uh, we see a David uh, that has fallen. Uh, 
And to understand the background of this story, you need to turn yourself to 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 through 6. 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 through 6. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. Hold it for one second. Go back, go back for a second. It was time when the kings go off, off to war. Who's David? He's the king. Where should be, where he should be? In the bar, ready to battle. We're ready to fight. But where he, but what did David do? He remained in Jerusalem. And guess what happens? Next. One evening. Be careful about that time. Be careful about that nighttime, that new day. Be careful when the devil attacks the most. When you go to sleep. Uh, glory to that hour of temptation. What is it for you? What is it? Monday morning, Monday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night. One evening. David got up from his bed and walked around, wandering, has nothing to do, bored. He should have been fighting in the war. He should have been in the front line of battling a soldier, a mighty warrior, called to fight, anointed to win victories after victory. But one evening, David said, listen, I'm not, call, I'm not going to go do what I'm called to do. But I'm not going to, I know I'm anointed. I know God is calling me. But listen, I'm going to stay away. I'm going to stay home. Listen, when you're not in the work of God, when you're not doing in the purpose of God, when when you're not walking in the call of God, what are you doing? Be careful, be careful. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw, someone shout, saw, a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. Next verse. And David sent, someone shout, sent, someone to find out. Someone shout, find out. About her, the man said, "She's Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite." Next verse. Then David sent messenger again. David sent a messenger to what? To get her. Someone shout, "Get!" She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purify herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. Next verse. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. Next verse. So David sent his word to Joab. Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him uh, to David. Let me just stop there. You guys can read this story. And many of you know all this so story already here. A man that is anointed. A man that is called to do great things. Here, when he's not involved in walking in his purpose, the devil comes. Uh, glory to God. And we see that. Uh, we see the pattern of what temptation does. What temptation leads to. Uh, glory to God. Temptation leads you someplace. It leads you uh, somewhere, uh, glory to God. It leads you to the, uh, the down path of sin. Uh, James uh, chapter 1 verse 15 says, After desire has convinced, uh, conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth uh, to death. Uh, glory to God. Here we see David saw. He was walking around his room. He was walking around the roof. He saw. No big deal. But he entertained that temptation. Then what did he do after he saw? He sent. Go back to the scriptures, please. Go back up. Second Samuel. Oh, you guys are going ahead of me. He saw. He sent. He inquired. He went to find out, and he went to get her. 
See how temptation leads. Temptation leads to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, leads to death. See, he could have saw and he could have walked away. But the moment when he entered, temptation began to consume, which led to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, leads to death. <laughs> Glory to God. Many times, temp being tempted is not a sin. Temptation is not a sin. All men face temptation. All human beings face temptation. Even Jesus faced temptation. But the Bible says that he was yet without sin. So we all face temptation. But when it conceives into sin and when it's fully grown, glory to God, it becomes sin in our life. <laughs> glory to God. So you got to understand there's a, there, there, you know, when, when people have like, you know, like beach parties and stuff, they have this fire walking. Have you ever seen the fire walking? The coals, the hot coals, and, and, and they go barefooted, and they, and they run across, and they walk, and they play music, and, and they walk, you know, all across this fireplace. And, and, and some people make it across, and when you look at the sole of their feet, they're burned. They're, they're, they're jumping. They're in pain. They're running up and down. They can't take the pain. But when you look at other people's feet, their feet is not burned. They're fine. Why? Because some of them uh, take their time in running. Some of them just run across. Uh, glory to God. When you entertain sin, when you entertain temptation, let me tell you, sooner or later, you're going to get burned. Learn from David's. Example here, Psalm 51, he got burned because he allowed a temptation. He allowed a temptation to entertain in his mind. He could have walked away. David was in the palace by himself. David was bored. David was just scrolling. He had nothing to do. He was flipping the channels. He was going on websites after website. He looked here. He looked there. He made all the excuses. He premeditated every plan. Hey, I'm not going to church, Dad. I'm sick. You go. I'm going to stay back. I got an exam Monday morning. I got to do a project. And you stay back home. There's a retreat. There's a conference. And you premeditate. You plan. Hey, they're gone. I can do this. I can go. Okay, just like David. He planned everything out. Glory to God. And understand, when David did that, he was giving he was falling into the trap of the devil. <laughs> Glory to God. He looked here. He looked there. No one was there. And David thought, hey, who's going to see? Who's going to know? But David forgot. There's a God who seeth all things. He can see from heaven. Uh, glory to God. He can see. Uh, glory to God. For Bible, for Bible says, for his eyes are upon the ways of man. And he seeth all his steps, all his goings. Proverbs 5.20 says, for a man's ways are in full view of the Lord. And he examines all his paths. Jeremiah 16.17 says, for my eyes are on all their ways. They're, they're not. They cannot hide from me, nor is their sin concealed from my eyes. Does not David know, Gloria, that he serves a God who sees everything under the heavens. No creature is hidden from his sight, but everything is exposed and naked before God. That the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Keeping watch on the evil and the good. David looked here and there to see if anyone was in the palace. Anyone was at home. No one was home. But David forgot to look up. A God that sees me. A glory to God. A God that I cannot hide from. A God that I cannot conceal and my sins from. A God is seeing my going in and my coming in. A God that goes with me. 
the God that travels with me. Wherever I go, he, his presence is in me. Uh, glory to God. The Holy Spirit is within me. Uh, glory to God. When Jesus came out of, the, uh, out of the water after being baptized, we see the dove, the Holy Spirit, resembles the Holy Spirit. A dove came and sat upon Jesus. Uh, glory to God. Remember when you go, when you do things, the Holy Spirit is on you. The child of God, the born again child of God I'm talking. The Holy Spirit come rests in you. When you turn this way, the Holy Spirit, the dove is there. When you go here, the dove is there. When you walk into certain places, the dove, the Holy Spirit is here. And the dove, there's three, there's a quality about the dove. When the dove gets startled, uh, glory to God. When the dove get shaken or restless it will fly away but the dove will come back again uh, glory to God and again one one more time when the dove gets startled it fly away a second time but he will come back again but the third time when the dove is startled it will fly away and never come back uh, glory to God the Holy Spirit uh, might give you chances after chances after chances God told uh, the the Israelites I send you messengers I tend you, I send you prophets, but you did not listen uh, to the prophets. You did not listen to the messengers. And so uh, God said, the Bible says God had no remedy. Uh, this is God who say, hey, I had no remedy for the Israelites. So I moved my presence and allowed the Babylonians to come and, 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 and torture and torment and kill the Israelites. So only a rubber, rubber band will stretch only so far. But there will be a breaking point. Uh, glory to God. Do not entertain uh, temptation in your life. Learn from David. An anointed man. Had a call of God in his life. He's a king right now. Oh, glory to God. From a young age, he was anointed. He was the horn of oil uh, fell upon his head. So here, uh, David goes on. Uh, for about a year and a half after he committed the sin. For a year and three months or so, David kept this in his heart. No remorse, no sorrow, until the prophet Nathan came up to him and, and convicted David and said, you are that man. You have committed a sin. Glory to God. Glory to God. Until then, listen, David had to pray a price. For his sin. For a year and a half, year and three months, David had to pay a price. You know, the sin may be fun, but the sin is going to cost you. The sin comes with a price tag. Let me tell you this morning. Uh, glory to God. Sin may be fun for a while, uh, but you will end up paying a price. Uh, glory to God. Sin may take you farther than you intended to go. Sin will keep you longer than you intended to stay. Sin will cost you more than you intended to pay. Uh, glory to God. When you give in to temptation, when you give in to sin, uh, there's a cost. And David had to pay that price for a year and a half. When Nathan came and confronted him, it was, it was then, glory to God, David comes and pens his psalms. But a year and three months, do you have any idea what sin within himself did to David? <laughs> glory to God. The greatest blemish on David's life. Uh, glory to God. A very sad story of David's fall. First Kings 15 verse 5 says, For David had done what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not failed to keep any of the Lord's command, commands all the day of his life ex except in the case of who? Uriah the Hittite. All the days of his life he was right. The Lord says he was right in my eyes. He had not failed to keep any of the Lord's commandments all the days of his life except this situation here in the case of Uriah the Hittite. The man after God's own heart, right in the first few verses, 
breaks three commandments. Do not covet your neighbor's wife. Secondly, do not commit adultery. Thirdly, do not commit murder. The man after God's own heart. Uh, glory to God. The man that was anointed at a young age to be a king. Right in this chapter, he just breaks three commandments in his life. Uh, glory to God. So God sends the prophet Nathan to convince David of his sin after he had continued his sin. He planned everything out. He knew that Bathsheba had conceived. And so he planned to, to get Uriah drunk. And he asked Joab, his military leader, hey, bring Uriah back. Uh, glory to God. Bring Uriah back. So David's plan, David planned everything out. He, he meditated everything. And he said, listen, put Uriah, get, let him get him drunk. And I want to send him home to his wife. Uh, glory to God. But Uriah did, refused to go home and he stayed in the palace when that plan didn't work uh, glory to God, uh, God uh, David asked Joab uh, to send Uriah in the front line of the battle so Uriah can be killed uh, glory to God he planned that murder and the Bible says Uriah was killed in battle uh, glory to God here in Psalm 51 we see the price David had to pay within that year. Year and a half. David, when he was convinced, when he was convicted by the prophet Nathan, David pours out his heart. He pours out his heart to God. He begins to repent. Aren't you glad that our God is not the one that leaves us in our mess. Aren't you glad he would not leave you in your filth? Aren't you glad he would not leave you in your guilty conscience? For a while, he will send some way, somehow, through the ministry of the word, he will some way come and gather you back to himself, uh, allow you uh, to recover and repentant. My God will never leave you in your mess. He will never leave you in your filth. He will make a way of escape. He will find a way through somehow, some situation, uh, the ministry of the word, uh, some way he will bring you back uh, into rep uh, uh, repentance, bring you back uh, to himself. Uh, glory to God. Here verse 1 in Psalm 51 verse 1. Uh, David pleads uh, for God's mercy. David be, uh, being convicted of his sin. Uh, what does he do? He pours out his soul. To God in prayer. For mercy and grace. Verse 1 says. How mercy. On me O oh God. See his plea of mercy. It was not based on who David was. His plea of mercy was not uh, who Dave, what David had done. It was not the work of David that, was he, that, was his, that he was pleading for mercy. He was the king. It was not the honor of the king that he was pleading for mercy. But the Bible says, uh, David says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love not my works not who i know not my quality not my king not being a king not being born in dignity not being a prince of the tribal judah not according to my work or who i am but according to your loving kindness according to your tender mercies according to your goodness of your nature according to the fullness of his mercy uh, glory to god according to the multitude of his tender mercies according to these abundance of grace david pours out his heart god i'm a mess i try to do a lot of work but it's according to your loving kindness it's according to your compassion according to your fullness of your mercies and abundance of grace that I can plead for God's mercy. There's nothing we can do. It's not a part of our righteousness. 
is not because of what we do for the church. It's not what uh, uh, we did or we, what we feed the hungry or the orphanage that God please, uh, God put his mercy on us. It's because of his according to his unfailing. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. What is this particular mercy that he begs for? The pardon of sin. He's asking pardon of sin. He cries out, blot out my transgression. As a debt is blotted out or crossed out. As auditors keep a record book. As accountants keep a record book. David saying, I know my sins are blo- I wrote, I've written in your record book. Please blot out my transgression. Blot out my sin. Wipe away my sin. Wash my sin away. Erase it. Wipe out my tra- transgressions so that I may not appear to be to demand any judgment so there will be no hint uh, of demanding judgment uh, upon my life wipe out uh, oh glory to god blot out uh, wash out uh, wash it away cleanse me from your record of wrongdoing the glory to god why does david want sin to be blot out why does David keeps saying, wipe me, cleanse me, blot me out, the glory to God. Why, why did sin, what did sin do to David? What, did the, what was the price that he had to pay for a year and three months? Verse number three says, my sin is always before who? Verse 3, my sin is always before who? Me. Imagine going a year and three months where your sin is before you. The guilt of sin, stain of sin that is deep within me. He's saying I'm soaking in guilt. I can't get rid of my sin guilt conscience. My sin is always before me. Imagine a year and a half. Your sin is before you. That guilty conscience is before you. When you lay down, the sin is before me. When I rise up, the sin is before me. When I go to church, the sin of guilt is heavy upon me. When I sit in class, the sin, the guilty conscience is before me. When I rise up, when I study for an exam, the sin is always before me. Imagine going through that for a year and and three months. David, every day in his life, the sin he did was before him that guilt comes here and three months there's a price there's a cost to sin I don't know how many of you can understand what David was facing he said I can't I can't deal with this guilt of sin it's always before me it's always before me. Oh, glory to God. It's when I lay down, the sin guilt is staring me in my face. I try to push it away. I try to keep myself busy. But this guilt keeps staring me in my face. My sin is before me. What did sin do to David? It ate him up on the inside. Let me go quickly. Psalm 32, 1 through 6. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed means happy. Is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. The one whose sins are forgiven is happy. He gets a fresh start. His states, his slate is wiped clean. Verse 2 says, Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Uh, Glory to God. Hey, uh, uh, Hey, find out how come you're not happy. Verse 3. 
It says, uh, when I kept silent, hear me out, hear me out. Here's your victory. Here's your deliverance. David says, when I kept silence, when I kept it all inside, when I hid my sin, guess what? My bones wasted away. The guilt was so heavy upon my life that it crushed my bones to powder. I couldn't speak. I was groaning all day long. What did the sin do to David? Verse 4. The sin caused him to sin not Bathsheba, not Uriah. But it caused him to sin against God. Against you oh, only have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight, O oh God. I violated you, God. Because of sin. What does sin do? It will cause you to violate God. It will cause you to sin against God. Nobody else but God. Let me go quickly. Verse 6. It says, because there's sin within me. I don't have truth in the inward parts. As long as I'm hiding sin, long as it's hidden sin, long as I keep, make, uh, keep remaining silent about it, uh, there's no truth uh, in the inward parts. For, for David said, Lord, I want truth in the inward parts. What, does, what did sin do to David? Verse 8. Verse 8, because of sin, because of what I did, I can't. The joy of the Lord is gone. The gladness is gone. Verse 8 says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. If you keep sin in your life. You won't have joy. You won't be happy. You might be wondering, why am I cranky all the time? Why am I angry all the time? Uh, glory to God. Why am I lashing out all the time? Uh, glory to God. I don't have joy or gladness anymore. I don't find joy in the things that I used to enjoy. Uh, I can't be happy. I'm surrounded by family. I'm surrounded with every kind of blessing. But I am not happy. Uh, glory to God. Uh, listen, long as you have sin within you, you will not be happy. Lord, David says uh, that, that the joy and the gladness is gone. We tend to get angry. We tend to lash out. These are side effects of sin. Symptoms of what's in. Lashes out. And your parents come into a room. You lash out for no reason. You get angry. Glory to God. But you really want to say, Dad, Mom, it's not about you. It's about me. I'm struggling with this sin in me. That's tormenting me. That's torturing me. There's a, such a heavy of guilt conscience. It's not you. It's me. The joy is gone. The gladness is gone. Verse 9, because of sin, you don't want to face God. Verse 9 says, hide thy face from my sin. You don't want to face God when there's sin because you're so, you're like, God, don't look at me. I don't want to face you. I'm such a mess. I am dirty. I am filthy. I'm no good. I messed up. You don't want to face God. You don't want to read the Bible. You don't want to pray. You get unsettled. Unre you get restless during prayer, family prayer. You don't want to sit because this is unrestlessness. You don't want to face God, God. Not because you don't like God, but you feel so distant. That's what sin does to you. D.L. Moody said the Bible will keep you from sin. 
or sin will keep you from the Bible. Verse 15. Sin within will keep you from worshiping God and from worshiping God freely. Sin will keep you from praising God. Verse 15 says, O Lord, open, come on. O Lord, open thou my lips. David, a praise worshiper who can praise God anywhere and everywhere and anytime. Uh, glory to God. Even when he's tending the sheep, when he's in the mountain, he can praise God. But here, when sin was within him, he cannot open up his mouth. The one who wrote all the praises, the one who said, even an army come besiege me, I will not uh, be shaken. Even if a war me breaks out in front of me, even then I will be confident. The David who says, one thing I desire, that I will seek, uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my uh, life uh, to behold the beauty of the Lord. That David, when sin entered him, he couldn't open up his mouth. So he said, Lord, you open up my lips that I may show forth your praises. For do you desire not in burned offerings or I would have brought it you desire a broken and a contrite spirit. I know this is not a revival message. But I know it's hitting home. The happy harp player, the poet, the worship, the songwriter, the mighty warrior who cut the head of Goliath. Here, because of sin, he couldn't open up his mouth. He said, David said, because of my sin, let me go quickly here. When I kept silence, when I kept all inside me, my sin was always before me. I was soaking in guilt. I couldn't get rid of this uh, uh, guilt. The guilt was so heavy upon me. It was crushing my bones. My bones wasted away. I was groaning all day long. It caused my sin. It, it caused me to sin against God. Because of sin, I didn't have truth in me. Sin robbed me of my joy and gladness because of sin I didn't want to face God I couldn't worship God this is the cost this is the price you have to pay for the cost of sin but how do you break loose how do you get out uh, glory to God but in Psalms 32 verse 4 and 5 David says, yes, because of sin, day and night, your hand was out upon me. Means my strength was sapped. But the moment, 32, yeah, next verse, 32, 5. But the moment, the moment, the moment, that instant moment when I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquities, I said, I will confess. Where is your victory? Confess, uh, glory to God, my transgression to the Lord. And you did what? forgave the guilt of my sin that heavy guilt that, that that you're soaking in guilt that heaviness of guilt that's crushing your bones that's eating you alive on the inside it only takes one moment my word of god david says when i opened up my mouth when i confessed my transgressions to the lord you forgave me and the guilt of my sin was removed glory to God but the moment I acknowledged my sin the moment I did not cover up my sin when I confessed my sin to the Lord you forgave the guilt of my sin at that moment I was made white as snow I was white clean the pressure was gone the pressure was lifted the guilt dissolved my sin disappeared my joy was restored I had peace within my conscience The moment I confess, what is the answer? 
I don't know how many years you've been carrying this guilt of your past. It's time to get rid of it. Done with it. All you have to do today, acknowledge that you messed up. God, I messed up. This day and time, this time last year, on December 22nd, on March 5th, 1989, God, I messed up. Acknowledge your sin. And when you confess before God, the Word of God says, the Word of God says, written and inscribed by the Word of God, if you believe the word of God, when I confess, I believe if God forgives me, wipes out, cleanses out, blots out every transgression in my life. Glory to God. It's rooted out. Glory to God. What does the Bible say? What God does with my sin when I confess? What happens? Psalm 32, one says he forgives it. Psalm 32, 1 says he covers our sin. That means it's hidden from God's view. Come on, are you hearing me? God puts our sin out of his sight. Verse, three, uh, verse 32, verse 2 says he does not charge us for iniquity. I want someone to get this in your head. Psalm 103, verse 12 says he removes our sin. Uh, how far does he remove your sin? How, how far as the east is from the west. What does that mean? An immeasurable distance because east can never meet west. Get that into your head. When you confess before God, my God says, I will remove your sin as, ye, as far as east is from the west. An immeasurable distance. East can never meet with west. This morning, he removes your sin. He says, I throw your sin in the depth of the sea. It will never come back up again in the name of Jesus. Once you confess, the word of God says, I throw it oh, in the depth of the sea. It will never come back up again. And if it does, let me tell you, the devil is a liar. He's the one that bringing that back up. Because one my God throws it in the depth of the sea. And it will never rise up again. Come on, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by, by faith and not how we feel. We, fa we walk by faith according to the word of God. If my God says, I forgive you, I'm white as snow. I'm a child of God. If God said it, that settles it and I believe it. You want to move in authority? You want to move with the purpose of God? Do not let the devil oppress you. Move in the gifting of God. In the, in, the, in the purpose of God. Otherwise, uh, you will just wander around in life. You got to take the word. You got to meditate it. You got to eat the word of God. You got to apply it in your life. What does he do with the sin? The Bible says he throws it behind his back. What does that mean? He'll never come back in front of him again. We're the ones that brings it back. It's your neighbors that brings it back. It's your siblings that brings it back. It's your parents that brings it back. It's your church folks that brings it back. But my God says, once I cast it into the depth of the sea, it will never. I pray that someone will receive the word of God. It's not what I'm talking. I'm talking the word. I'm giving all I got. I'm giving all my strength today to let someone who know who's been suffering with this guilt for years. I don't know who you are, but the word of God is speaking to you. Come out from your shackles. Come out. Break out. Because God said it is finished. It is done. Your present, your past, your future. It was finished at the cross. 
I don't know who you are. I don't know how long you've been bearing this guilt. But today, but today, but today, hearken unto the voice of God. Isaiah 43, why am I throwing scripture? Because I don't want to speak. I want the word of God to speak. Isaiah 43, 25 says, He remembers our sins no more. Micah 7, 8, 18 and 19 says, He cast all our sins into the depth of the sea. He hurls it. He casts it. Like Southwest Airlines, throw your baggage. That's how he hurls it. He throws it. It never come back again. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 says. What does this resemble? Why are we here today? Why? Because we are perfect? Oh, I didn't do what David did. No. Sin is not just committing adultery. Sin is just not smoking weed. smoking weed wrong no but if you know you're the temple of the holy god you be careful what you put in and what you put out colossians 2 14 says he nailed our sin debt to the to the cross In 1977, Julian and a friend broke into a home in Southern California. Mary Stein, a 73-year-old elderly, was home at the time. The two criminals beat the elderly lady to death with a piece of wood. Remarkably, during the beating, the elderly woman got the strength to, to call out to God and she said, oh Lord, I'm coming home. Those words, like a laser imprint, burned into Julian's mind, haunting him. Oh Lord, I'm coming home. That word burned into his mind, haunting him. A year after the murder, he gives his life to Christ. Soon the guilt, the shame, the sense of responsibility for killing the elderly lady began to rise up. It became so heavy on Julian. God began to rebuild this man's faith. And as Julian grew in his faith, the guilt, the shame, the sense of responsibility intensified. As he grew in faith, this feeling didn't go away. He tried everything. But that guilt conscience, the heaviness intensified. In God's timing, after 17 years, Julian did what his conscience and God told him to. He confessed to the murder. He confessed to the crime. Today, Julian is serving prison sentence for the murder. He may be physically behind bars. He may be physically bound with shackles. But in his heart, he felt such freedom. Physically, even though he was in jail, the moment he confessed, he had freedom in his heart. That heaviness, that guilt conscience was uh, removed, uh, uh, glory to God. Physically, he might have been confined, but freedom in his heart cannot be confined. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. How long are you carrying this sin? 
how long are you carrying this guilt? I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you are online watching me. And you've been carrying this guilt conscience. Whatever it may be, it may be even be adultery. And your spouse may not know her. But I'm here to tell you, you've been carrying this guilt conscience for years. Would you come to the knowledge of Christ? He's the only one that can remove the stain of sin. Every deep stain within the guilt conscience I'm talking to you. Would you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Whatever it may be today. True freedom. Let me tell you, church, is only found in Christ Jesus. God paid the price for sin by giving his only begotten son this morning. Stanley and uh, Uncle Phil, if you can come forward. What does this represent to you? What does this mean to you? Do you take this lightly? Do you understand the pressure of sin that cost us but also cost Christ? At Gethsemane, where Jesus knew that he had to go on the cross, the weight of the sin of the people came upon him. The heaviness of guilt and the wrath of God came upon Jesus. And the Bible says, uh, glory to God, his blood pressure rose uh, and capillaries broke. Uh, and out of his sweat pores came out blood. Uh, glory to God. That is a medical co condition. That is a medical diagnosis. Uh, it is, you can Google it. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, he, he, the pressure the guilt and the wrath of God. Your sin and my sin was laid upon. Jesus said, I don't want to do it. These people are messy. They're filthy. They don't listen. But Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. God so loved you, loved you, loved you, loved you. That he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for the sin. Though David fell, he was not utterly cast out. For God graciously upheld him and raised him up. Glory to God. But understand that one thing, God forgives sin, but there are ramifications consequences to sin David's child died sin brings death the child he had with Bathsheba died but God told David you're not going to die I have forgiven you glory to God and that's what this represents someone had to die so God cannot change his word God is not man that he should lie. But the wages of sin is you and I are alive because of this. Not that we haven't done anything wrong. Not that we are perfect. But someone had to die. Would you take this seriously? Let it not be just another moment where you reach your hand carelessly. Sin costs. Someone had to pay. We're looking good and dandy and very pretty with our fits and our outfits today. Because someone paid the price. As Stanley reads Isaiah 53, can we prepare our hearts to Isaiah receive the Holy Spirit? 53. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant. 
and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmities. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised and we were held in no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases and yet we accounted him stricken and struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed down for our iniquities, and upon him was the punishment that was made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that was led to a shearer is silent. And so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain when you make his life an offering for sin he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days through him the will of the Lord shall prosper and out of his anguish he shall see light he shall find sanctification through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death. And he was numbered with the transgression. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased God to bruise his only son. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleased God to bruise his son. love. God have mercy upon me according to your unfailing love. Church, let me remind you this holy communion, this Lord's table is not the altar church's table. It is the Lord's table. And the Lord's table is a sacred ordinance set by God for the church and it should not be entered into lightly. This table is for believers who are born again and baptized and if you are born again and baptized you're a guest today and you take holy communion at your home church you're welcome to partake in this holy communion with us today as well the bible keeps reminding us in corinthians also it reminds us to examine ourselves that we will not be judged if we examine ourselves we not we will not be so this moment, let's not take this lightly. Let's not take this unworthy. Let us not reach our hands like any other day. But truly, with the heart of repentance. David was a man after God's own heart because he had a heart of repentance. The greatest worship the greatest revival is when you tears come down your eyes in true repentance. It's not just saying, Lord, forgive me, Lord, wash me. No, that's not what it means. It means a complete turnaround. Make every effort to change. That's taking it worthy.
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Can you take this moment to examine your life today? See if there's any sin, any unrepentant sin in your life, any guilt that you're holding for years. David held on to that guilt for a year and some months. And you had, you know, you heard what the cost, the price he had to pay. Today's your day. Today's your day that guilt can be wiped away, blotted out from the record of wrongdoing. You can be free. Your conscience can be free. Uh, glory to God. One thing David reminds us uh, is that if we were to confess, if you to acknowledge, then my God is faithful to forgive you and make you white as snow and make you in the right standing with God. This morning, God does not desire any of you to stay away from the Holy Communion. God wants you to take part in the Holy Communion. But you got to examine yourself. Please don't examine anyone else. Don't examine the person sitting next to you. Don't examine the person at the end of your row. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says examine yourself. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this sacred time as followers of Jesus Christ. To participate in this memorable occasion, Lord. To spend some reflective moments of self-examination. Lord, examine our hearts. Search our hearts today. And show us anything that is not pleasing to you, O oh God. Any pride, any act of rebellion, any unconfessed sin. Any unforgiveness that may be hindering us from getting closer to you, Lord. Search our hearts. And bring it up, bring it up, Lord, bring it up. Highlight it, oh God, right now, Lord Jesus. And as we take this bread representing your life that was broken for us, we cannot understand the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion. But bless this bread, Lord, that represents your life. And in the same way, Lord, as we take this cup representing your blood, which was poured out from the cross, because your blood shed for us and your body broken for us this morning we can be free from the power and penalty of sin wash us and cleanse us Lord. we ask all these things in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen
have not received the element, please would you raise your hand and one of us will bring it to you. The bread, the body of Jesus Christ, which is given for us, let us take it together. blood of Jesus Christ through whom we have the forgiveness of sins let us drink together let us pray Father God we come to this table resting only in your worthiness Lord we are not worthy but we rest only in your worthiness and only in your righteousness that we are able to stretch forth their hands in taking part in this holy communion we thank you Lord for reminding us what you died on the cross the forgiveness of our sins and the healing of our body to satisfy your righteousness and justice as the bread and cup nourished our body today. Father God, may your indwelling spirit strengthen our souls until the day of your appearing, until we sit with you at your heavenly table. When that day comes, when we see you face to face and take part in your heavenly table, Lord. Nourish us, strengthen us. Let your indwelling Holy Spirit guide us and help us to live a victorious life, oh God. May we receive this in assurance. Assurance of forgiveness, eternal life, and a hope of glory. And we ask it all these things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, church. Uh, rise to your feet. Let's celebrate the goodness of God uh, uh, this morning. Lord, the blood of Christ and all of my cleanses hope, our conscience. And all of my strength and all my delight is in you, Lord,
Church, let me remind you this morning, the blood of Christ cleanses our conscience from every speck, every stain of sin. And our conscience is perfect in freedom. At the cross, the divine holiness was perfectly met. Glory to God, a divine exchange has taken place at the foot of the cross. Our old sin nature, glory to God, was which made us an enemy of God, was exchanged at the foot of the cross. Our list of sins were exchanged at the foot of His cross. Oh, His Son paid our ransom. The punishment we deserved was paid in full, successfully paid in full for every sin, every act of rebellion, every sinful thought, every uh, pridefulness, everything present, past, in the future. It has been successfully paid in foot. Your debt has been canceled. Our relationship with God has been restored. We are hidden in the righteousness of Christ. And let me tell you this morning, what the cross resembles is that our eternity is secured. The blood of Christ cleanses us from our conscience of every speck, every stain of sin this morning. After you take part of this Holy Communion, there should not be any ounce guilt of sin from the past that's oppressing you, that's holding you, that's such a heaviness upon your life, that robbed you of your joy, that robbed you of your gladness, that brought pain to the body, that crushed the bones. Today, today, let it go. It is done. It is finished at the cross. It is done. You are free. Just like Julian, your heart is set free from the guilt of conscience in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. And we bless you for this wonderful day that you've given us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us.